Thanks, Chad. So how many, uh, how many people captured a swarm this year? Raise your hand. I'm going to say it's half the room or, or thereabouts. How many of them reported something to the swarm report? Uh, about a dozen of you. Good. Okay. Somebody who didn't report, but raise your hand. Uh, what kind of dessert do you like? <laughs> what, what can I bring you? <laughs> That's my ploy, right? Is it, my my uh, message to you is, I would love for you to report your swarms, right? So we can have the data. Logical progression of things in the spring. Sorry about that. I got I got Tim syndrome with the uh, <laughs> stage one starts to grow right now. Grows, grows, grows. What happened here? Swarm, right? If we only knew when this was going to be, now a projection might be in New Jersey for March 15th, but when is this thing going to swarm? That's the reason for the rationale. Why do we do this? You know, a bunch of us talked about all this, you know, one thing you're trying to do is overwinter your bees, and then you let them swarm. That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So from that standpoint, who, what, when, why, you could look at the, the data here, but the premise of this is, how did it turn out? It was a good dry run. 135 swarms in New Jersey for last year. We got started in April. The swarms had already started and kicked off. We're at a plateau. It was a good dry run for us to figure it out. But this year is going to be the year, right? If every one of you who has a swarm reports, we're going to get some very meaningful data. So I can give you a representation of what we collected. But here's what we ask. What county you collected it in, what was the address, and 82% of the people who reported actually gave us the street address when we only asked for a city and a zip. And we're plotting this on a map, so that's the first disclosure for you, is you're putting your address in, it's on the internet. In the grand scheme of things, many people don't fuss over that, but just making sure. And you have the option to leave that off. It is not useful if you don't put the town in. So you can't get past the swarm report without putting the town in. We ask you for the location, the swarm size, the height of the swarm. Height of the swarm is, can I reach it from the ground, six feet or low? Do I have to get on a ladder, six feet to ten feet, or is it above a ladder and I need to do something from that standpoint? Here's where the swarms were reported, the 135. This will be up on the swarm report webpage, you can look at it later. But you can see, you know, where, where it is. Um, center of the state, 18 here, 18 here, 12, 11. So it seems to be like right in this region for whatever reason. But our, we want to see thousands up here if there's thousands in New Jersey. We want to see that this year. And we'll get some interesting data. Here's the frequency. We started in April. And you can see by the growth curve here, we're at the peak and we dropped off. When we start this year in February, we will see that ramp up and you'll be able to go and see in your area when this is happening and I'll tell you how in a second. But this is the actual data, April 28th to May 5th, there was 34, 16, 25 and so on and you can see just about July 1st, it went down to pretty much nothing in New Jersey, right, from a report standpoint. How, how high were they, right? This is where we start to get into some of the data visualization. Less than 6% or 6 feet was the answer. Majority of them. Of the 135, 57 of them were less than 6, it's 42% were ground level. 32 of them you needed a ladder. The other side of it was most of them were higher. So if it wasn't on the ground, it was in a tree. Interesting. You see, it'd be interesting to get a bigger data set and see if that still holds true percentage-wise, year on year. How many responses were for the size? Smaller than a grapefruit, eight. Grapefruit to a basketball, overwhelmingly that was the larger size. 85% of the sample were in that size frame. And then you had 42 of them that were bigger than a basketball. 
Here is the time of day, starting with 6 a.m. and going through to 7 p.m. After 7 p.m. there's nothing, and before 6 a.m. there's nothing. So this is the data set. As most people would probably surmise, when does the swarm happen? It's between 12 and 2 o'clock. Now it would be interesting when we get more data to see if this stuff holds true. You want to tell us about a swarm? We're using the same survey monkey tool that uh, Tim is using for the winter death loss. And I do understand that there's fatigue, right? How many surveys can you take? I just saw a survey for swarming coming out of Australia or something. You know, somebody's trying to collect data from Australia. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be for us in New Jersey, but um, it's five questions. You're in and out in 30 seconds legitimately. We've kept it very, very simple. I'll get your question in a second. I do put weekly reports up at the Northwest site. You can come in and watch the numbers go up. And you'll also see this map, which actually shows you where they're being plotted. And you can click on the range down below. And as you click on it, you can see it week by week where they're happening. So I think with a large data set, it would be very interesting. One of the hypotheses is that this is going to grow from the south to the north. What we found with this data set, that wasn't necessarily true. It just happened across the entire state. So with a bigger sample set, when all of you report your swarms, it'll be very interesting. And you could send me a note at njswarm at live.com if you want to ask questions about this or what's going on with the data. And we need you. <laughs> right? So everybody repeat after me. On my honor, I promise to pledge. You, you don't have to, but thank you, everybody. <laughs> I, I had a question in the back. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because I forgot to mention that in my haste <laughs> of being thrown off. Um, <laughs> so, so this is not a perfect science. I'll say that right up front. But what I'm looking for, and I think in the general scheme of numbers, this won't skew the results that much. I want you to literally collect the swarm or I want you to physically have eyes on swarm before you report it. Now, is it possible that four people are going to have eyes on swarm and report the same thing four times? I'm kind of looking at the data set, and if I see things being reported over and over again, what I'm trying to figure out is it Charlie Ilsley having eight swarms in his yard. <laughs> I call Charlie out because I love him. Or is somebody keep reporting the same thing, right? So. Uh, I'm not messing with the data that much. I'm letting that be. But literally, what I want you to do is to see the swarm. I don't want somebody to come in and say, hey, there was a swarm over on so-and-so road, and you go put it in. My preference is you physically see it. OK? Does that answer your question? Yeah, understood. I, I, again, that's what I'm saying. It's not a perfect science. Um, ideally, what we would do is see the swarm issue and report it. That's when the swarm is there. You don't know when you, and, and let me repeat the question. You could see a swarm flying. It's a swarm right there at that moment. You could see a swarm hanging in a tree, and it could have been there for three days, and the next hour it's going to leave. And you're reporting the swarm at that time. So is it meaningful data to say between 12 and 2 o'clock I saw the swarm? I, again, I, I, I don't have a good answer to that. I, I would say that um, a lot of anecdotally what I've been told is people are out mowing the grass at 12 and 2 and they see the swarm fly. So I, I really, I put the data about time in there last night, literally. 
I had left it out because I debated whether it was a relevant number. But at the end of the day, when we get a larger data set, I think we may or may not be able to use that, to your point. I, I, it's a valid question completely um, as to whether it's relevant or not. So what I do know is when you go and enter the form directly, you have to put a time in and it defaults to midnight. So there are people who put stuff in at midnight and I know that they never entered a time. So they get, they get taken out of the data set. I hope I answered your question. Now I'm going to give this back to Jack. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>